Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Obscura Ascendancy. Welcome back, everybody, to It Resolves. And yes, we are back with an Obscura Ascendancy deck. This is going to be an interesting one. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with Obscura Ascendancy, uh, solely because I feel like it can be very good, but I struggle to really make it work. Uh, however, uh, a good friend of ours, a community member, in fact, Breaded and Fried, uh, was kind enough to send this deck list over to me and said, hey, finally build a standard deck. If you want to test this one out, maybe you can use it on the channel. So Breaded, I got you, my friend. Uh, uh, I do really appreciate you also putting this deck together. It's been a really fun one to test. I've only done a handful of games, so there's still plenty of learning to do. But let me kind of give you a, a brief breakdown of the deck for now. So uh, the idea is obviously com just completely built around Obscura Ascendancy, which is the Esper enchantment in the Ascendancy cycle. Whenever you cast a spell, if its mana value is equal to one plus the number of soul counters on Obscura Ascendancy, put a soul counter on it and then create a 2-2 white spirit creature token with flying as long as there are five or more soul counters on the ascendancy spirits you control get plus three plus three which is a pretty big boost let me be clear that's massive uh when i saw this card i immediately thought hollowed haunting that's kind of the direction that i wanted to go with it still haven't gotten that to work uh unfortunately and so uh, we're gonna we're gonna try this out instead but uh, the idea is obviously that we can continuously put counters on this as we scale up through the CMCs and then hopefully get that big huge plus three plus three payoff towards the end uh, now as far as making that work we've got a handful of cards that'll help us kind of scale up uh, we do have consider uh, as a way to draw some cards delver of secrets which is kind of a nice card for this deck because we run so many instants and sorceries it's actually pretty easy to get this one flipped over uh, and if you can get this down turn one it's a great aggressive play uh, we do have otherworldly gaze here look at the top three cards of your deck put any of them into your graveyard and the, the rest back on top of your library in any order we can flash this back for two as well one thing that i would like to note in testing uh, we're going to learn this together as we go through, but I believe, Breaded and Fried, uh, you, I'm assuming you put this in here because you can cast it for its flashback cost. I don't believe that actually counts as two mana, though. We'll, we'll talk about that as we go through because I want to make sure that uh, I'm not giving false information there, but uh, in practice it didn't seem to work that way, so we'll learn together as we go through. Uh, we do have March of Otherworldly Light and March of Wretched Sorrow, plus Multiple Choice, which is kind of a nice card as well. Uh, as far as the two drop slot, we do have Rite of Oblivion, Faithful Mending to draw us into more stuff, and then a One of Vengeful Victim. <clears throat> which is kind of nice as well and again that disturb cost i'm not sure how that plays in we're, we're gonna learn that as we go uh skyclave apparition works on two levels one it's removal uh on a creature which is obviously good but it's also a spirit so it works quite well with the ascendancy if we can get it there so definitely a great one for the deck <clears throat> we do have obscura charm as well which is a nice kind of catch-all for us uh, if we happen to find our ascendancy in the graveyard or really any of our spells we can bring it back uh, if it's a multicolored spell uh, with the obscura charm and just throw it back onto the battlefield we can deal with instants or sorceries the opponents control uh, or destroy a creature or planeswalker with mana value three or less so there's a lot of utility in this uh, obscura charm that i'm very happy to see uh, in the four drop slot, we do have Memory Deluge, so a great way to dig further into the deck. Make sure that you're refilling your hand, and of course, playing a four drop card is always helpful. Uh, and then in the five drop slot, we have AO and two Elspeth Resplendent, which both of which are obviously really powerful cards for the deck too. So uh, I'm really curious to see how this goes. Again, I struggle with the Obscura Ascendancy. It's just a card that I've never been able to reliably get to work. Hopefully we get to see that today, but if not, we're still gonna have a blast trying it out. So Breaded, again, thank you so much, my friend. I really do appreciate you sending this over. If any of you have a deck list uh, that you've been working on or that you wanna see tested, send it my way. You can DM me wherever, you can email it to us, you can get in contact with us on the website, whatever's easiest for you send it over to us i would absolutely love to test it out especially now that we're kind of getting towards dominaria united i'd uh, i'd like to test out some more fun stuff instead of just all the competitive stuff so we'll give that a shot guys but let's jump into the games let's have some fun all right guys and here we are for game number one now this is actually a pretty great hand in the sense that we do have the ascendancy that is able to come down on turn three we also just have a skyclave apparition 
both of which are great options for us. I think we'll just go ahead and keep this. The question is, in which way do we want to play our lands, actually? That's going to be the biggest decision. Uh, and I think it'll be very obvious, more so obvious, I should say, when we see what the opponent's up to. Drawing that Faithful Mending definitely leads me to play that Shipwreck Marsh turn one because it'll give us that untapped blue source if we need it. Um, yeah, so that actually makes the, the process even easier. We actually just get to do this, pass, leave up that Faithful Mending, and then of course we can uh, hopefully capitalize on that later. We do not have a one drop card to activate the Ascendancy yet, so that is something to keep in mind. Uh, Skyclave Apparition does a nice job actually of dealing with this, so we'll see how this goes. Um, okay. Another Kami. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and Faithful Mending for sure. Ooh, what do we discard here? Um, it might actually just be the Pathway, and... You know... I think it's Memory Deluge as much as I don't want it to be. Um, we kind of need to find ways to deal with what's on the board, and I think these Skyclave Apparitions are going to do just that. So let's go ahead, let's make sure we get these off of the field. Uh, great way to deal with these um, little commies, uh, which I really, really like. Uh, yeah, and they're just permanently exiled, which is just ridiculous. So uh, very, very helpful for this deck for sure. I'm not gonna block, I'm just gonna take that. Okay. Uh, I do like that quite a bit. Um, hmm. So, uh, I mean, they are actually kind of locked on mana, not locked, but definitely on a uh, in a bad way with mana, which is great. Uh, and we actually can, we can kind of get them here. All right, I'm gonna do the, the, <laughs> The really punishing play, I normally would not do this, uh, so keeping in mind that I know uh, we are unfortunately getting rid of the Ascendancy here, but uh, this clears their board and they have nothing, they had no lands in hand. Uh, and so I feel like this is important enough that we can actually do this and kind of get away with it. We'll see, that may be too aggressive, but I feel like it's worth it to try. Okay, sure. Um, wow, we are just like nailing these... Uh, these uh, Skyclave apparitions, aren't we? Um, do we just go for it? I mean, alternatively, right? We can just go for this, but I, I think we go here. Let's just, uh, let's just punish them like crazy. <laughs> Easy four damage. All right, sick. I think the right play was probably Elspeth, but I don't really care. <laughs> that was just way too cool. Um, all right, now we will go for the Elspeth. Uh, and the question is, do we minus or do we plus just to be able to kind of finish the game quicker? I'll be honest, I think the correct play is this, uh, and we'll give it flying here. Um, as silly, uh, not as silly as that is, because I do think that's just the right play, but uh, as unexciting maybe as that is, uh, I think it's the right way to win the game because eventually they just don't have anything. Um, okay, they're gonna borrow time. I assume Elspeth. Sure. Um, quite good. I'm glad we actually did what we did then because it does allow us to, to kind of push through for some more. Um, interesting. Okay, uh, let's, let's attack first. Excellent. Um, hmm. I think we just throw this out and then leave up either Faithful Mending or the uh, Consider. Um, kind of straightforward plays, but basically we're just trying to end the game at this point, so I'm not terribly concerned uh, about anything else. Yeah, there we go. We did it. Unfortunately, without the Obscura Ascendancy, although it was helpful uh, for the March. Uh, let's jump into game two. The brand new Reanimator Proxy Pack is now available through the end of July. If you'd like to pick up this month's amazing Proxy Pack, please visit patreon.com slash itresolves for details. Alright guys, here we are for game number two. Let's see if we can keep this up. Uh, this hand is not so good. Um, hmm. I think we have to mulligan that. Unfortunately, I think this is the keep. Uh, just because, so the trick is we couldn't really play much out of the previous hand, 
Um, we could play maybe one card, and while we did have plenty of lands, they were not, none of them were black, and we're running into the same issue here, but we have mostly things that we can play, so let's get that turn one Delver down. Uh, next turn, we can drop Cave of the Frost Dragon, of course, uh, and we'll see what happens. Looks like Mono Red Aggro, most likely. Uh, yeah, absolutely reveal. That's fantastic, actually. Um, let's go ahead and do this and we will attack in uh i'd like to save the otherworldly gaze if we can because we do have the obscura ascendancy so on one hand i'd like to use it to dig for lands on the other hand i'd like to save it so we can actually use it later uh just to be able to trigger the obscura ascendancy so we'll see what we can do here um interesting okay All right. Um, I mean, the easy play is to do this and then Skyclave Apparition, I think. Uh, which seems good enough for me. Um, they're going to trade down for this later on, so they also just get to sacrifice this. I'm honestly... Okay, I was going to say, I wouldn't think they would actually sack it. I think they'd rather have the 1-1 one -one later, so just my opinion. But All right, so we are stuck on mana. Um definitely stuck on mana and we've got two black cards in hand absolutely not what you would have, but we'll see what we can do okay uh i mean it is black mana um it's a little bit tricky because obviously it's not great but <laughs> um yeah i think we just attack with both here i don't think they're gonna have a flash speed creature that can block the apparition and i'm in the damage race at this point so uh, definitely just going to be attacking in. Um, we do have the March of Wretched Sorrow next turn, which is actually quite good because it does gain us a good bit of life here as well. And it looks like they might be just stuck, uh, which is kind of awesome. Um, let's... Let's attack first. Um, I'm not going to march this quite yet. Uh... I think they're might they're they're not attacking with it because obviously they're losing this damage race. So I think what I'd rather do is get the ascendancy down. And this is sort of our insurance policy because keeping in mind we have a card in hand to trigger the ascendancy which does give us a creature. And now we have two. So uh that's actually pretty important for us. Um Let's go ahead and do this. Go ahead and start spreading things wider. Um, I think we actually just put those two in our graveyard. I actually do want the land, so that seems important. Um, we can go ahead and Faithful Mending. <laughs> uh, might as well. Um, and I mean, hey, to uh, to your credit, Breaded, this is working quite well um, at the moment. Fortunately, we do have to discard two cards, so I'm just going to discard those two. And then we will attack in here for three. So basically what we're telling them is, hey, you have to deal with multiple creatures all at once or you're going to lose the game. Uh, we're basically putting a clock on them to say, yeah, you might be able to deal with the uh, aberration, but not these. And there we go. We got the win. That's two for two. Breaded, let's go for three, my man. Let's see if we can do it. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Uh, and yes, we keep. A um, little bit tricky, for sure. That was a bit of a voice crack as well. Uh, we would like to get some more lands, for sure. But uh, And the mana is going to be a little tricky anyway, because I think I'd like to play the Mistgate pathway so I can get turn one Delver. I believe. We'll, we'll see. We, we saw how good turn one Delver can be, so that was really awesome. And we did get the Obscura Ascendancy to kind of work. So, I mean, hey, Breaded, we got it to do its thing. I'm really happy about that. Uh, let's go ahead and drop the Delver, turn one. Looks like a potentially mono green list. If they're running Lair of the Hydra, that's a... Oh, no. Uh, yep, definite reveal. That's fantastic. Um, let's go ahead and drop the tower. Um, and we'll just freely attack in. I think we kind of want to wait on the Consider for the Obscura Ascendancy. That's our turn... Or that's our one mana spell to start this, this chain. And then we actually do just have the Faithful Mending to, to help us along as well. So uh, I think that's going to be the play. Uh, yeah, I think we just go for it here. We'll get the attack in for three. Um, man, 
I should rename this deck a little bit to just Delver. <laughs> um, it's really good, Esper Delver. Uh, but we'll see what the opponent is going to do here. It looks like they... Okay, so they give it flying? That's kind of fine. Um, I don't particularly care about that, actually. Harg. Interesting, uh, Gilded Opinions. I feel like that's probably not a great card in general. Um, let's go ahead and consider. We're going to move up the chain here. Uh, would love a land, so basically anything else off the top, I feel like I throw back. Let's do this. I think we throw Delver and consider back. Um, and get the attack in for three. So here's the thing, we kind of want them to invest mana to give this thing flying, because then we actually have plenty of answers to kill it. So <laughs> it's kind of just fine either way. Uh, we also do have a three, four, and five play. Uh, so there is a chance we actually get to the ultimate uh, if we haven't potentially just gotten the win by then. We'll see. Um, nice. Jenny Faye. What a great card. Jenny Faye is a really sick card for sure. So here they actually get to choose if they want a cat or a dog or whatever. Looks like they went for the dog. That's fine. Um, I don't particularly care about that, <laughs> to be brutally honest. Um, okay, so, I mean, I think the play is pretty clear, uh, we're just gonna kill this. Uh, gives us another one of these, and we get a very nice little attack in. Awesome. Uh, we are short on land, so worth noting that we're, we're functioning fairly efficiently off of just three land. Um, now, the negative side to that is to say that we're stuck on three land. <laughs> Um, but we're trying to be positive today, guys, and so far, I mean, this is working great. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, we'll see if we can get uh, a little bit further, but technically we do just have lethal right now. So that's fine. Uh, yeah, I don't particularly care about that. Um, yeah, we win. We did it. Uh, I'm amazed. Let's wrap this one up. All right, Breaded, we went undefeated with your Obscura Ascendancy list. That's pretty amazing. And we, while we didn't necessarily ultimate the Ascendancy, and by that I mean get five counters on the Ascendancy, we did really get to see it work uh, in our favor, hugely, hugely in our favor. Uh, in the second and third game in particular, we were really able to capitalize on it. And even in the first game, while we didn't play it, it did actually give us the out for that march, uh, which was really important for us to win the game. So I feel like in general, this deck is kind of sick. I mean, I know, uh, hear me out. This is a small subset of games, so I understand that if you were to run this list, you may not get the same outcome that I did, and that's totally fine. This was three games back to back. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. Unfortunately for us, we actually did get quite lucky, but I do think the deck is well tooled out. Breaded, I think you did a pretty good job. What we did not answer is the question of flashback cost working with Obscura Ascendancy. So. If I could, if anybody here knows or has tested that or whatever, let me know in the comment section below just so everybody else knows because I, in testing, tried it and I don't believe it worked. If, I'm, if I recall correctly, because I did test this yesterday, uh, I believe it didn't work, but I want to make sure that I'm not giving false information. So if you guys do know, please let me know in the comment section below. That way everybody else gets the same info. Uh, regardless though, this was a blast. Reddit, I can't thank you enough for sharing this list with me. I really do appreciate it. If anybody has a deck list they would like me to try, now is prime time for it, guys. Send it over my way. I would love to test it out. Hopefully have some fun with it. If it is good enough, I will play it on the channel. I do test the decks, or I try to test the decks, like just a couple games, usually two or three max, uh, just to make sure that they are gonna work and that they're not just complete bombs. Uh, no offense to any deck builders out there, but that's certainly happened before, so just keep that in mind. But regardless, thank you so much, guys. I really do appreciate you watching. I hope everybody had a fantastic time. Man, I love this one. This is a blast. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.